You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 269 of Podcateers. It's armchair imagineering time again, and this week we're talking about one of the lands we all considered one of the most difficult, Frontierland. We also dive into some of the things that we're most excited about at the upcoming D23 Expo. Remember that if you have any questions or comments on anything that we talk about, we'd love for you to join the conversation and give us your thoughts by leaving a comment on the blog post for the episode at podcateers.com slash 269 or on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. Quick note, we recorded this episode before the mansion's 50th anniversary celebration and the chalk walk, so we'll be talking about that in next week's episode. However, I will be posting a vlog on the YouTube channel uh, from chalk walk, so make sure that you're subscribed and that you hit that bell icon for notifications so you know when new videos are posted. You can find our channel by going to youtube.com slash podcateers. I'll also be doing a wrap-up post for Chalk Walk soon, so keep an eye out for that. But in the meantime, we want to thank you all for your amazing support. This episode of Podcateers has been made possible by the generosity of listeners just like you called the FGP Squad, also known as our podcast Fairy Godparents, because it's their monthly contributions via Patreon that help produce these episodes of Podcateers. If you like the podcast, it's a great time to become part of the FGP squad. We have giveaways and special content coming up. So if you'd like more info, a link to sign up or to make a one-time donation is available by going to podcateers.com slash FGP. And to all of the members of the FGP squad, we just want to say thank you for your continued support. If you're new to the podcast, thanks for taking some time to listen. We appreciate you making us a part of your day, and we hope that you like what you hear. So let's do it. Let's jump into this episode, shall we? Here is episode 269 of Podcateers. I actually love the concept of D23 allowing you to pre-register the stuff that you're going to go to. Oh, yeah. Because I feel that yeah. it might just lessen all the fights that happen in the lines. Fights? Yes. You got into fights in the line? No, no. But I <laughs> felt say, like man. I needed to make it a little more exciting. Nah, Disney's a positive place. <laughs> <laughs> fights never happen at Disneyland. Oh. I mean, at Disneyland sometimes, because you're out in the heat and the sun and you're hangry and whatever, I kind of get it. But like at the convention, like, I don't know, like it's, I don't know, it's such a unique experience. Like, I don't mind waiting hours in a line for some big panel that I want to see, you know, like, and it's fun just like chatting with Disney fans while you're there. I like it. Yeah. Right. You get to network. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. you make new friends. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, guess what? We're going to follow each other on Instagram. <laughs> and then things just happen and grow. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Exactly. I've met a lot of people and have become friends with a lot of people that I met in lines waiting for the Legends panel or mm-hmm. whatever the case is, like for the arena, you know, several expos ago. So you're right. I mean, it is... Uh, it's just a gathering of so many fans that it, it is a magical experience. Uh, unlike our last year, there were some hiccups. You know, we've talked about it before. We had the the little snafu with scheduling and trying to get the into the, the panel last year on Friday, mm-hmm. which essentially ruined our Friday. I, I keep saying last year like if it was last year, two years last ago. Last Expo. Yeah, last expo. That's how I will say it from now on. Last expo. And uh, I didn't have a ticket for Saturday last time around either. And Sunday, you know, I I guess the good thing was that we got into the Lion King panel. We also got into Marty's last panel. So, I mean, overall, I guess it kind of worked out. But this time around, you know, I'll be... uh, I'm just going to be wallowing in the corner while you guys are in the Haunted Mansion <laughs> celebrating 50 years battle on Saturday. I'm telling you, man. Aww. Look, look. The tickets for the expo go on sale 
exactly one year before the expo. So true, next August, be ready to buy your early bird ticket. It's also the cheapest time to buy tickets. So just be yeah. freaking ready, man. I'm sick That's of this. True. I want you there on my Saturday. My kids don't need to eat. I'm buying my tickets. Look, look, chicken nuggets don't cost that much. <laughs> they can survive on them for a week. <laughs> You're good, man. Wow. You're good. You heard it here first, guys. Gavin loves to give kids chicken nuggets. <laughs> Heck yeah. And kids love me for it. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I think next time I will do that. I've always kind of waited because, uh, I mean, there there's several reasons. But a- as time kind of went on, I had an engagement on that Saturday, and I didn't even know if I was going to be able to go to the expo. When I finally knew that I was going to be able to go, I tried to buy the tickets, and then it was sold out, mm-hmm. and I had to just wrap it with Friday and Sunday this year. So it's fine. It is what it is. I'll just watch somebody's video on youtube this is probably the only time you're going to hear me say this that it's just not the same yeah because i know i've toured every disney park through youtube and i <laughs> vouched for that but this time because i just want to be a part of that panel it's just not the same yep uh plus the simpsons are going to be there on they on are. saturday as well that's so crazy and, yeah, I thought that was pretty interesting, you know, when they made that announcement. So l- let me ask you guys a question. I think this is a, sure. a pretty good way to kind of get into the expo mood. Uh, we're recording this just around the time that they're starting to mail out the passes mm-hmm. for everyone that pre-registered. And as you know, this year you are able to pre-register for any of the panels that are happening what is it that you're excited to see? Because both of you are going all three days this time, right? Yes, that's right. correct. Okay. So let's start with Friday. What are you most excited about for Friday? Legends. Uh, yeah, I was going to say Legends is definitely the highlight of Friday. That's going to be the, the initial thing that people are lining up for. It's always the very first headliner show of every expo they've done. And that's going to be the big one. I personally haven't been to a Legends panel in uh, two or three expos um, because they kind of changed the format of them and I found them less entertaining. Um, It seems like nowadays it's more like a standard award show like Oscars or Grammys or something where it's like they, you know, say a little thing about them. They might play a little film or something, and then they kind of get up and give an acceptance speech. Um, But in earlier expos, it used to be more of like a show, you know, like where they would, like the year that all the Disney princesses came out and sang their signature song. And uh, the Muppets performed. And, you know, like it was more of a thing. So, um, but it is very, very popular. So that's going to be the big thing on Friday for sure. For me, I'm going to be on the show floor. Like that's, that's my jam. And that's what I'm looking forward to most on Friday. Yeah. That's what I think I'm going to do after the legends panel. Um, I've never done the legends panel. Oh, really? So, I mean, yeah, this will be my first time. It's cool because you get to see the most iconic people of all at the legends panel. Well, yeah, yeah, Iron Man. I am. <laughs> <laughs> I got it this year, <laughs> so of course, and I mean everybody else as well that's been mentioned, mm-hmm. which is, you know, it's going to be a good lineup. Um, but yeah, afterwards, I do like to go to the 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 floor mm-hmm. and I, <laughs> what we call is like treasure hunt. So we'll go, we'll look through all the knickknacks, all the little things and little stuff. You know, sometimes it's a hit or miss, but. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I I don't think I've ever missed the Legends panel, except for the first year. Mm -hmm. Was it the first year? I don't remember. But I I feel like I've been to pretty much every one of them. And I I just like to be a part of the celebration. You know, I, I love the fact that, you know, they get their handprints and the little Legends trophy. Uh, I would love to have one of those one day. And so it's almost like me sitting there just dreaming, oh, one day I'm going to have me one of thems. And so uh, I love going to the legend ceremony. Uh, This year, I I know that they're honoring 
you know, Robert Downey Jr. and a host of other people. But I, I feel like there's going to be that, that, oh, but there's one more thing. And then they're yeah. going to honor, like, uh, the rest of the original Avengers you think as so? Disney Legends. Oh. I, I, I kind of so. feel like it. That because would be epic. I think Robert Downey Jr. is going to bring people in. But because even though his was the first film, I feel like that first set of Avengers is really what oh, took man. the MCU into what it became. So I feel like at the end, just like they did with Johnny Depp before and how they had like all the surprise ones. I feel like this year the surprise is going to be, uh, by the way, all of the Avengers of the original Avengers cast are now going to oh, be Disney man. Legends too. See, now you got me second guessing my plan on Friday <laughs> because I got to tell you, I got a pretty serious man crush on Chris Hemsworth. And if I could be in the same room as him, <laughs> <laughs> even a big room like Hall D23, man, I might have to go see that. That would be a great surprise at see, the end. I, I agree. I mean, that's why I'm going because, you know, RDJ is going to be there. So, you know, <laughs> right. You know how I feel about him. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of at the end, the very last show of that day, I think, is the there's a In Search of Swiss Family Treehouse with Kevin and Jody, which sounds very yes. interesting. Yeah. And they just posted recently their restoration project of the Swiss Family Treehouse organ. That was both in the film and the Swiss Family Treehouse at Disneyland. And they restored it. And it looks amazing. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. I remember seeing that post. Um, and I remember looking at that thing and thinking, that's not what it looked like when we saw it at that show. Yeah. You know, at the that's what this is Disneyland show that we went to. Like it just it was falling apart. Oh, it looked you know? terrible. It's, yeah. It did. I mean, Kevin and Jody are just so amazing yeah. at what they do and the restoration projects that they take on. Ah, oh, man, that it's is magical some skills. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Uh -huh. They've got a ridiculous set of specialized talents. Like it's it's no wonder they get to do the greatest projects because they like when somebody needs the best of the best, they go to Kevin and Jody and man, they get to do the funnest things. You know what would be fun for us? To have them on the show. To have them on the show oh and talk about gosh, their career yes. yeah. and talk about how they got into all of this with how they how they take these projects on and how, you know, I just I would love to pick their brain and just kind of hear that story. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, so I think we should put out a formal invitation to Kevin and Jody to come on the show. Yeah, that. So would this is be it. This awesome. is the formal invitation. But I will get in yes. contact with them outside of the podcast. I'm just but. I think it would be super fun. Uh, yeah, so D23. Uh, we talked about Friday. Anything else that you guys are looking forward to on Friday, or should we jump to Saturday? Yeah, really for me, Friday is always the get the lay of the land, do the entire show floor, like just at least like a quick walkthrough and like pick out all the things like, okay, these are the areas that I really want to spend some time. They usually have some like giveaways or exclusives on the first day. So if any of those are interesting, yeah. try and hop on that. But really, yeah, that's it for me on Friday. Cool. Yeah. All right. So let's jump to Saturday. Outside of the Haunted Mansion Celebrating 50 <laughs> Years panel, there's a lot of really great stuff on Saturday. You know, the Simpsons are going to be there. They got the behind the scenes with the Walt Disney Studios. They have the Broadway in concert, the 25th anniversary celebration. Mm -hmm. um, they have the secret Walt Disney Company project. You know, yeah. that's going to be announced. You know, they're going to talk about the, the secret project. And, uh, I mean, there's just so much going on. They got that Kermit the Frog thing. <laughs> what are you guys looking forward to the most? Because a lot of these things overlap. And yeah. the the secret project panel, which we don't know yet, that's going to be announced about a week after the launch of this episode on August 22nd. I mean, what are you looking forward to? And if you could speculate... What is that secret project? Uh, gosh. Okay, so here, here's the <laughs> crazy thing. That happens right as the Haunted Mansion 
event ends, right? So you can't do both. You would have to pick one or the other. So on August 22nd, I'm going to be making a choice. I'll be honest. Because if it's kind of what I think it might be, then I'm going to go to that over the Haunted Mansion um, thing. Now, that might be crazy. I don't know. We'll, We'll see. But I... I'm kind of thinking it might be the official announcement of uh, the expansion of the Disneyland Resort property portfolio and the possible entry of a third park into the resort. That's that's my guess. Or actually, that's okay. my hope. That's a, that's a good guess. Mel, what about you? Uh, ooh. Besides Haunted Mansion, I'm actually excited about The Simpsons. Nice. Really? Yeah, I really am. Um you know growing up with them and then having our worlds collide never did i think i was going to see the simpsons at d23 mm-hmm. yeah let alone anything disney so i'm kind of curious and i want to know what's you know what they're going to present um the other thing that i was looking at is actually the um i think it's the last thing which is travels with marty a uh, conversation with the scholars and the imagineers mm-hmm. yeah and i if i can make it that'd be great because i you know i told you guys i love hearing stories so if i could hear you know anything new anything different it's like learning so yeah i would totally do that <laughs> i don't know what to guess for the secret thing <laughs> um i i don't know I mean, it can't be, it can't be DCA. I, I don't think it is. I don't know if it is. Gosh, I think you hit it on the on the head, Gavin. I think it's the it may concern Disneyland and possibly Tomorrowland. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it could oh. be. It could be that. It could be Tomorrowland. It could be a new international venture um, as well because I've always speculated mm-hmm. that. Um, Australia would be an expansion yeah. zone for Disney because of the amount of Australian tourists that I've met in the parks. Yeah. Because when we were going in the 80s, the park was filled with Japanese tourists. What did they do? They built Tokyo Disney. And then in the 90s, in the, in the late 80s and 90s, it was all European tourists and they built Euro Disney. And You know, so like those trends exist because they identified a market with with a population that wants to see Disney. And they know that not every Australian can get all the way to America. But if you put a park there, then you could, you know, make some money. Um, And there's been, you know, a population increase in Australia over the last several decades. So there's lots of people down there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it could that's a be that. good one too. So we'll just uh bypass my what I'm excited for on Saturday talk <laughs> and uh we'll oh. go right into speculation here. Also, I don't know if you uh, noticed, but there's two other haunted mansion events that day too. There's Yeah, let's not talk Jeez. about it. Okay. <laughs> let's right. not talk about right, it. We'll move because on. I'm already upset <laughs> wow. about the celebrating fifty years thing <laughs> and the fact that Ken Anderson's having the year of horror, humor and voodoo panel. Yep. Uh, come on. Let's not uh, put poor salt <laughs> in the wound here. Okay? Okay, okay. Uh, so speculation-wise, uh, I I agree with you 125% on this. Having Disney down under, I think, would be a fantastic idea. I think it would be a park that would be so well-received. Uh, quick shout-out to our friends Mel and Ron from the Die Hard Disney Nuts Facebook fan group because they live in Australia. And, you know, yep. it's very infrequent oh, cool. that they get a chance to come out to Disneyland or Walt Disney World. They recently got back from a trip uh, to Hong Kong Disneyland, and we were following along with their with their travels, you know, through the Facebook fan group and on their Instagram so uh, I think it would be a really well-received park. And so uh, that is a fantastic idea. I speculate that it might be another property in Florida, ex- mm. especially considering that Universal just announced that they have another park in the works in Florida. Ooh. So I think that they're going to open up another park to compete with that, uh, especially because they've already announced things that are happening at Epcot and all that other stuff. 
Uh, I I wish that it was a, a third gate here in California because I know that there's been talks about the Angels moving away from Anaheim and that, you know, there was yeah. going to be all that space where Angel Stadium is. I don't know where that talk is right now. But if they decided, hey, we're booking it and we're leaving Anaheim, how awesome would it be if Disney said, okay, we're taking that property now and we're just going to build a third gate there. (laughs) See, I think Ah. if they do that, and we could go off on a huge tangent here, but I'm going to be quick. (laughs) I think if they buy that property, they should build a parking structure and hotels on that property and have a transportation infrastructure to get people back to the resort and then transform the Toy Story lot into the third park because then you've got the proximity to keep it, you know, in the neighborhood, so to speak. Angel Stadium's close, but not that close. But they just spent all that money on... Um... Oh, I'm sorry. No, Toy I'm Story. it with the pig... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Toy I'm Story. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. The Toy Story parking lot is so far away. It's right in front of the convention center, and it's so far away that uh, I just don't like parking there. I'm sure that I, other people share that that uh, feeling with me. Mm-hmm. That's that's not a bad idea. I think that or if they did a park, or the Simba lot, right? Yeah, the that's Simba not lot that's used enough, for cast though. members. It's not big enough, isn't it? No, no, it's small. If they were to do the open the third gate over at Angel Stadium, I mean, there is that one street, um, Gene Autry Way, that they just reopened. I mean, they redone, and it's like clear sailing mm-hmm. from Haster, which is you could actually get from Catella, which is not that far. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm sure if they were to work out like a system that you were talking about, I'm sure they could use that route right yeah. there. If they needed to connect to Disneyland and DCA or or whichever parking lots, whatever. If the park is um, that far away, though, like I really feel like they would have to uh, work with Anaheim to allow them to run mm-hmm. the monorail down there. Or they do have Ooh. this cool new gondola technology that launched in in Walt Disney World. Yeah, that's it's yep. so slow moving, that's though. That's true. You know, like I feel like yeah. Yeah, it's cool. If they expect to get the same amount of people, I mean, there's way more people visiting Walt Disney World and going between resorts and yeah. housing than there would be here. So if they can anticipate the load of people that's happening at Walt Disney World, I'm sure they can figure it out here and the frequency of the gondolas. Yeah, that's true. Ah, speculation. So many thoughts. So many many thoughts. thoughts. Okay. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear what that's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be exciting. And who knows? It could be our secret project is we're buying Warner Brothers. Oh, wow. And, you know, I mean. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, imagine if that was it. Yeah. Then they'd have all (laughs) kinds of issues with Harry Potter. That that would be problematic. (laughs) (laughs) We're building the Simpsons world. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, okay, <laughs> what is it that you guys are looking forward to on Sunday schedule? Because there's a lot of really great things happening on Sunday, yeah. too. For me, this yeah. is when they have the Parks show, and that's always my favorite show of the Expo. That's the one I never miss. Um, that's the one I'm willing to line up for hours to see. It's the first time they're doing it on the last day. Um, so that's why I kind of feel like that secret project thing is going to be like, a park announcement so that they don't spoil it during this. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm excited to see, to just see what the Imagineers are cooking up. I think we'll get really good sneak peeks at the Tron experience um, in Florida, as well as the Guardians of the Galaxy attraction. Yeah. Um, I think we might get good glimpses of what the plans are for the Marvel expansion in DCA. And some announcements that they took from the Podcateers Armchair Imagineering oh, episodes yeah, and how they're yeah. going to be <laughs> yeah. implementing yeah. them into yeah. future expansions. Ex- exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that that's always my favorite thing of the expo. Uh, so that is far and away my highlight for Sunday. Right on. Mel? I'm torn because there's two that are back to back. So, I, man, I got to make a decision on this. Um, 
the 50 years of Walt Disney archives, mm-hmm. yes. the gold mine, that one sounds amazing, but I love, oh my gosh, I love character voices. Yeah, you mm-hmm. do. So it's like, what do I choose? That's... You know, is it? That would be a tough uh, choice. It, it is. It is. And uh, I don't know which one to choose. Um, good thing is that the Disneyland 59, the monorail and Matterhorn and everything, that one's cool. That one's in the in the green. Yeah. But I, I like that one, too. Yeah, I'm torn. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, they're only happening back to back. So technically, you only have to run across to the opposite side of the convention. Oh, center. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Because I bet that archive stage is up on the third floor and Hall D is oh, all yeah. the way at the other end. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> right. And... You see Melissa just trucking through the corridor. <laughs> Get out of my Get way. Get out of my way. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, imagine they do. Okay. So, remember. Oh, this was four years ago. This is going to be the only thing that will stop me is, like, crowds where, you know, the trading cards? Yes. And they were having, like, the Hatbox yeah, Ghost box card. Ghost ones and mm-hmm. stuff. And that huge crowd, that would <laughs> that would determine, like, if I'm going to make it to the next one or not. So, if they don't have anything, I'm going to speed walk and just go for it. <laughs> I was okay with that crowd because that crowd was the reason I got the Hatbox Ghost card. So, you oh, know, yeah. I'm okay with it. Uh, unless it's preventing <laughs> me from getting to my next panel, then move or I will snap with the gauntlet. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's so many great things happening on Sunday this time around. You know, you, you know, you talked about it already, Gavin, that there is a lot of things like the parks uh, – the parks experiences and products and stuff normally that happens on a saturday yeah so it is good that they moved it onto a sunday because i felt like sunday's always been like the sleeper day you know mm-hmm. there there aren't yeah. very many good panels it's kind of like the end of the expo and it's not as exciting as day one and two but this year day three is just as exciting oh, as day yeah. one and day two it's packed yeah. and it's definitely packed i'm particularly looking forward to two things at technically three but the two that i'm looking for forward to unfortunately are back to back as well and that is the parks experiences and products and then the mark davis in yeah. his own words imagining the disney parks panel yep that is happening in conjunction with a book release that's an exciting book because it was a joint production by chris merritt and pete doctor ah. so I know they're possibly going to be the ones presenting at that panel. Uh, The book is releasing, I believe, either before or after the panel. And if you get it at D23, it's going to have an exclusive WED stamp inside of it. It's going to say, like, WED Research, like, Hmm. when you get it signed by the authors. Interesting. Nice. I'm contemplating getting that or going to the Parks panel and because Gavin's going to be there, he can just fill me in on the last 20 minutes. And I'm just going to leave early to go to the Mark Davis one. Oh, oh there you go. Okay. Teamwork. I will start um, thinking of a price for those 20 minutes. Okay. <laughs> so like I said, I'll probably watch somebody's YouTube video later. <laughs> and that way it's free. <laughs> okay. All right. I see how it is. <laughs> okay. I'll buy you a hot dog. How about that? All right. I like hot dogs. All right. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's so many things to choose from. There's like all the pavilions. They're going to have the Disney Plus things out there from Saturday. You're going to be able to experience so many things. Let's just throw the question out there. If you're going to D23, day one, two, or three, and or three, what are you most looking forward to on each day? Join the conversation. Leave us a comment on Facebook, Instagram, or on Twitter. We'd love to hear what you're most looking forward to, and we will share that in the next episode all right before we move on to armchair imagineering for this episode we're going to be armchair imagineering frontier land this month 
Uh, I do want to remind you that this episode of Pocketeers is brought to you by an amazing group of people that we like to call the FGP Squad. It's comprised of listeners just like you, and for a small contribution monthly via Patreon, they get exclusive access to additional content, contests, and we heart all of them because it's their help via Patreon that help produce these episodes of Podcateers. So if you want a little more information on how you can become part of the FGP squad, you can head over to podcateers.com slash FGP. And to all of the members of the FGP squad, we just want to send out a huge thank you for your support. Okay, I think it's about time to get this Frontier train going. Uh, you know... I love armchair imagineering episodes <laughs> because yeah. you get to flex that imagination muscle. You know, one one of the reasons I started this podcast was because I, I wanted my creativity to flow. It gave me an opportunity to talk about things I didn't get a chance to talk about with other people. When we first talked about this this format, I thought, oh, my God, this is like the greatest thing ever. You know, I've been so excited. I've been loving all the episodes that we've been producing but man, this was possibly the hardest armchair imagineering yet. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, it was I agree. <laughs> not easy, that's for sure. I I struggled. I still came up with four main concepts. So I feel like Ooh, that's I feel pretty good you about win. it. <laughs> yeah. All right, you win, because that's four yes. more than I came up with. Yes, I've got so many imagineering <laughs> trophies. I love it. My case is getting yes. full. Uh, right. It is hard, though, because <laughs> despite the size of Frontierland, so much of it is taken up by the river itself. There's not a whole lot of actual real estate to work with, it, and it's landlocked. We can't do that. Yeah. Oh, let's just go outside the berm and like expand a little. We can't do that now that Galaxy's Edge is there. It's completely landlocked. And or can't we? No, leave Galaxy's oh, no. Edge alone. <laughs> Or can't we? He's in... God. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I got to say, this was one of the hardest ones that we've ever done before. Uh, I, I mean, I had several ideas. One of them, like, the, I feel like my strongest idea this time around may be very similar to one that you've had in the past. But I feel that I can make it fit into this one. Okay by telling the story that I want to tell for this attraction. Cool. I like it. So uh, I, I don't have four. I will tell you that. Uh, I, I only have maybe two okay ones <laughs> and one like, eh, you know? Eh, okay. Eh, yeah. Eh. Uh, I'm on the same boat. I think I have two and the other ones are, how do I say this? You can slap another sticker on top of a sticker <laughs> type of thing. I'll start with my least one, and then you guys okay. can go with your crappy ones, and then we'll all go for Fantastic. good ones, and then I'll end on my super great one. How does that sound? <laughs> okay. okay. I think that works out. Okay. So I'll start us right. off. We'll let Gavin do the heavy lifting on this one. Gotcha. All right. Cool. All right. Sounds good. Cool. <laughs> well, I love Frontierland. Um, I have always been a fan of you know, the romance of the Old West and exploration and gold mining and cowboys and shoot 'em ups and whatnot. Um, so it, it, I've always enjoyed Western films and things like that. So this was kind of fun, but it was challenging because I feel like Frontierland is kind of fully baked, right? Like there's, I wouldn't change a whole lot about it. It's cool the way it is. But I did come up with some ideas. So my first one is... I think the Golden Horseshoe could use an injection of, you know, energy, something to kind of bring it back to life because I don't feel like it's a fully realized thing anymore like it used to be. So what I would like to do is really kind of lean into the Western saloon idea and make it much more of a, a Disneyland bar. And by Disneyland bar, mm. I mean like non-alcoholic, root beer, birch beer, cream soda, <laughs> like like keep it like that, right? I'm not I'm not wanting to bring in real booze yet, uh, and and have like Western style 
uh, food that you would have at a typical saloon in the Old West. You know, things like barbecue beans and cornbread and, you know, bacon and things like that. Like, I think it would be cool to have that kind of experience. And you could do floats for dessert and and things like that. Um, But then I also think they could change up the entertainment. You know, the fact that they have this kind of show, which is a pale shadow of the original show that used to be there, which was world famous. The show that they have now is okay, but it's the same show over and over and over again. And I feel like it's not one that keeps people coming back over and over again. Right. So I would, I think it'd be cool to have more of a rotation of different entertainment types that you might see in old Western saloons or theaters, you know, like I'm thinking of like the birdcage in um, Tombstone, you know, things like that, or uh, like kind of like what you would see in the Country Bear Jamboree, but like with humans, right? Uh, so mm-hmm. I'm thinking like um, you know, like a ragtime piano player, uh, a vaudeville comedy act. Um, maybe even like cowboy rope tricks and things like that. And then you could have hey, like... Let me ask you a question before you continue. Yeah. Were you sneaking a peek at my notes? No. <laughs> no. But... <laughs> I'll tell you why. It's not the first had... time we've been on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds, dude. Great minds. I, I hope you don't mind, Mel. I want to go right after this no because I'm just going to elaborate <laughs> on this and okay. talk about my idea. <laughs> cool. All right. Let, no let's problem. do this. I'm so excited. Okay, cool. Um, I would love to have like a a 19th century style choir, uh, like a men's choir singing like Stephen Foster songs, you know, like Oh Susanna, Beautiful Dreamer, Camp Town Races, things like that, uh, to really put people in that time period, you know. Um, You could even have like a small uh, brass band with period instruments playing John Philip Sousa tunes, which the Disneyland mm-hmm. band does mm-hmm. sometimes wind their way into uh, Frontierland and play in that courtyard in front of the Golden Horseshoe. But I think bringing it in there on stage would be really cool. Um, and just that kind of rotation of things, like whenever you pop in, you never kind of know what you're going to see on that stage because there's so much variety, I-, I think would keep people coming back or keep them in there longer to kind of see what's up next, you know, because I think these would rotate pretty quickly. Uh, Anyway, I I just think those are some ideas that could enliven Golden Horseshoe and entice people in more often. Awesome. Okay. So we are on such a similar wavelength on this one. I'm so excited about this (laughs) because I thought about revamping the Golden Horseshoe as well. However, I didn't think about the rotating variety acts. I did have a variety act show in mind. Mm -hmm. However, my variety show stars the Muppets. (gasps) I think the Muppets would be a fantastic property to bring into the Golden Horseshoe because they already have that like sketch comedy variety show vaudevillian aspect to the Muppet act. And so to put and port them into all of those like you can just bring in so many ideas that you taught the whole camp town races and all that singing the bands playing and then there's a whole stage show that culminates with a scene like the one from the uh from the muppet movie where kermit is like uh, looking down at doc harper and then like in the background you just have this giant animal head come up from like (laughs) behind the stage you know okay like i think You can just bring the Muppets and infuse the Golden Horseshoe with new life that would just bring more people in there to see that show and eat some food. Yes. Okay. That's perfect. I love this. This is my favorite thing ever. I want this to happen. I think that the Muppets brand of humor could be so perfect for that because they can not right? only bring yeah. just standard entertainment, but they can break the fourth wall and make jokes about how ridiculous the 1800s were. 
And, and they're so good at you it. You could have yeah. the critics up in a box off to the right in, yes. in like 1800 style tucks and tails just making oh, fun of it. Yes. Oh my gosh. This is yeah. the greatest. Oh, yeah. I, and, I love and this. And if you were done. <laughs> and it's an IP that Disney owns that just doesn't get enough love. So I, agree. I think that bringing them in is in this capacity would just be a wonderful uh, infusion of a wonderful oh my Disney property. Gosh, Ralph on the piano. Yes. Dude, I'm yes. saying. He's my favorite yes. Muppet and he doesn't get enough love. He could be the piano player for the Golden Horseshoe. Yes. Right? Ah, right? I love this so much. Yeah, so there you go. 100%. That was one of my ideas. Okay. And I think it just goes really well with what you were talking about, yes. which is why I wanted to jump in. Uh, I'm, yeah, I love it. That's why I like these two, because we get to, like, play off of each other and riff, and, like, that's yeah. that's genius, yeah. man. I am 100% sold on your idea. I'll, like, we keep my food ideas in there, but your entertainment idea. Sounds good. Cool. I like it. <laughs> Perfect. Because look, you had me at bacon, right? Or lost me early <laughs> on when you were like, no alcohol. I was like, what? Well, like, okay. But then I you got me back at the bacon. Yeah, part. I still don't feel like it fits the Disneyland thing yet. Like, that could change, but I, I do kind of like that DCA is its thing and Disneyland is its thing, minus yeah. the cantina. But that's on another planet, so it doesn't count. That's true. It is on another planet. Right. So I get you. Yeah. All right. Wow. Um, Mel, do you want to jump in right now or should we have get, bounce back to Gavin since he had more ideas than we did? Go for it. Well, <laughs> wait, I, Gavin. no, could you guys have three what? each, right? Technically. Yeah. 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 Go ahead and Two and a go quarter. ahead and throw one down, <laughs> Melissa. Just throw, give us your throwaway idea. Okay. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to take over the island. Oh, okay. And I love. Tom Sawyer's Island or Pirate's Lair. And get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> now it's the Lake but, of America. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> um, so, you know, when I first thought about it, I'm like, okay, I personally love the fact that you could free roam, do whatever, discover stuff. And I'm like, this is really cool in a sense of a lost boy. But that's fantasy land. So I was like, nope, oh, scratch okay, that. yeah. So I was like, okay, what's another IP that we could bring in that has a talking tree <gasps> that would look amazing is Pocahontas okay. and Grandmother yes. Willow. Stop it. You looked at my and... notes. <laughs> this is getting creepy, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it'd be awesome to have her because, you know, it's kind of hidden. Yeah. You, because you have like those trees. Plan a little bit more. I know, uh, the Fort Wilderness is for other stuff, but if they were to open that up, bring in some activities for the kids, like what, um, John Smith and I can't think of anybody else right now because I'm just like <laughs> those kind of things. I'm sorry, but if you had the chance to be able to, you know, just roam around. There's a little show that Grandmother Willow will talk about. Her leaves come to life. And then you can meet Pocahontas. I think it'd be really fun. Yeah. Um, the tunnels, the caves that we have could tell the story about it, about her, her people, her tribe, everything. That's something I really love. The storytelling that the Native Americans would tell for generations. So if we could incorporate that, I think that'd be so much fun. Yeah. hundred so, percent. And, yeah. and you know what? If you left the yes. island the way that it was, you didn't expand it so that the Mark Twain could still go through and all that good stuff. Right. What you could do is you could implement some cool of like some cool like fast pass system, uh, like through the app where it's only a limited amount of seats. And then you create this Ooh. like mini stage show and you can use practical magic effects, like practical stage magic that you teach kids to mm -hmm. like, make certain things appear while Pocahontas is telling the story. And it's just, oh, it could just be this whole like Mickey and the Magical Map like experience, but just to like a few people at a time. And yeah. it would make it so much more magical because it would seem like an intimate experience. And then just to see the, the ships fly go by. 
Ducks fly by. <laughs> Swim by. <laughs> okay, so... Like right in the middle of the story, you're like, Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, like, uh, yeah, you totally looked at my notes, first of all. Cheater. Uh, <laughs> but... I'm going to expand on that when I get to it because that's actually okay. my like big main idea. So I'm still going to save that one oh, wow. for the end. So cool. once okay. I do, then we can kind of riff on both of our ideas and go from there. Cool? Cool. All right, cool. All right. <laughs> okay. So are you done? Yeah. Okay. All right. My next one, we're going to go back to the mainland here. Back to the near the entrance of Frontierland. And despite my earlier statement about really kind of enjoying the romance of Western films and, and the Old West and the idea of it, um, I do kind of have some issue, not kind of, I do have some issues with our uh, romanticization of firearms and, um, you know, the, the gamification of guns. So I would like to completely remove the shooting exposition in Frontierland and replace it with something less violent and more positive. A tickle station. A tickle station. <laughs> old Western style. With tickle sticks. No. Featuring old man McGucket. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. No. What I would like to do is something that has been done before in amusement parks and fairs forever but i want to do it on a disney level so what i'm thinking of we're all familiar familiar with this i'm sure and it's the idea of getting the chance to don old western clothes and take an old-timey portrait right we've all seen this okay. in parks before but i want to have like i mean just an endless variety of western wear of every type and you know costume thought you could have uh so that's the first level of authenticity that you get um i want to have a variety of sets and backgrounds and environments that you can have your picture taken in and through amazing ar technology and Disney licensing, you can also include Western Disney icons in your shot with you. So you can have a group portrait with Fez Parker as Davy Crockett, right? Mm -hmm. You can, you can mm -hmm. have a picture with the Lone Ranger, with John Carter, with Woody and Jesse, with Pecos Bill. Wow, you're, you're taking this all the way to Mars? Dude, no. Before he leaves, like when he's oh, here gotcha. still. Like, you <laughs> I was know, like, dude, in Arizona, you're going all the way to Mars with this right? idea? Yeah. No. Uh, like any anything that starts out in like the 1800s in the American West, like those iconic characters you can be pictured with. So imagine like a cool like sepia toned like Woody standing next yeah. to you in your in your cowboy outfit right like i think it'd be really cool and you could get really neat souvenir photographs um you know that are on a disney level with their theming right because i feel like most mm -hmm. of those places it's just like you know like maybe planks of wood behind you or you know maybe like a pseudo like bar or something with a couple of bottles on it but like this is going to be like AR, VR, whatever technology where they're going to have fully realized environments that you're going to be photographed in with Disney characters. And I think it could be a really cool um, souvenir to take home with you uh, uh, from your vacation. Um, and for those of us that are local and APs, it gives us a huge variety that we could go back and get a picture with all these different characters and have a whole collection. So that's what I would like to change the shooting exposition into is an Old West photography studio. You called me a cheater. <laughs> uh oh. Because I kind of had that in mind. I was like, wait, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> good job <laughs> same nice. wavelength guys this, this is, is awesome. crazy because none of us talked about this beforehand at no. all yeah we all thought yeah, of these ideas we just, separately we, we promise but i think after we've done it so long we are kind of all on the same page it looks like yeah <laughs> yeah you know it's funny when you think about those pictures 
I, I remember a long time ago, I don't know where our picture is. I don't think we ever took a picture or scanned it or anything, but we went to Knott's Berry Farm with a group of friends, and mm -hmm. Knott's Berry Farm has a studio like this where you can dress up. And at the time, I remember thinking, man, this is just so cheesy. Like, why would I want to do this? And then we started doing it, and it was so fun. Yeah. Like, you're just dressing up. Like, you're dressing up like a sheriff or a bandit or whatever yeah. the case is. And then you're posing in different locations. Yeah. And then before you know it, you got all these pictures to choose from. And it was just such a fun experience. I totally so agree. I'm totally on board with this. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Plus, it's kind of just an extension of what's happening at Memento Mori with the uh, with the ghost pictures, anyway. True, you know, it's just an expansion on that. And if you could somehow make it change, then even better. Yeah, right. Let's add a little bit of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, but for the adults, because it's always fun to have a makeover before we do our photo shoots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if we were to add that, I think that'll be fun, even if. For the kids, you know. Yeah, I think yeah. we could expand I, it because I I could even get rid of the um what is it the Frontierland Outpost right next to it, which is just a little pin store. Like we could take over that whole building and and make it, you know, pretty expansive. Yeah. Yeah. You you'd be able to set up a good amount of. Uh, like studio space mm -hmm. where you can have maybe three or four different scenes set up already. And then you just kind of move through the scenes or choose the scene that you want to go into. See, and I'm, I'm even p picturing just like a green screen where everything oh, yeah, is virtual. Green screen, yeah. You know what I mean? And you can pick I mean, they, from dozens, if not more. Yeah. And there are instances of that, like at the end of the Warner Brothers studio lot tour that we did mm -hmm. uh, just several months ago. At the end, they have five different stations <gasps> where there's just green screens and you can like ride a broomstick like Ooh. in a Harry Potter scene. You nice. could be like in a Fast That's and cool. the Furious scene, like, you know, riding a car. So, uh, yeah, I mean, if it's implemented like that with just green screens, it's way better. I like that idea way more. Nice. Yeah, I, I think it could be fun. It could be something that's that Disneyland, to my knowledge, has never had. Um, and with modern technology, photographic and digital effect technology, uh, it could be awesome. You could even maybe purchase digital versions with like animated effects in it. You know, we could go. Yeah, the Universal ones have that. You could buy a Premier lenticular print and it can be three-dimensional like yeah like cool you, we could go Ooh. all different directions with it yeah <laughs> yeah so i know the universal version you can purchase like a moving picture or like a small video where it's animated nice um, but they don't offer lenticular they do offer mm. just like the video version but i mean you gotta you gotta just keep stepping it up right yeah absolutely <sighs> i'm for this idea i cool. like this dude cool i'm so yeah. for it um, okay, so my next idea I kind of had some trouble with. This was actually the first one that I wanted to throw out, but because we talked about the you were talking about Golden Horseshoe, I figured, okay, it's a good time to jump in with my second idea. Um, this one I had some trouble with because I feel that the property is already being used in a fairly good capacity at California Adventure. Because of the space restrictions that we currently have in Frontierland, I wanted to build some kind of Sheriff Woody show building where you're helping Woody capture the evil Dr. Porkchop. And it's very similar to the opening of Toy Story where, you know, you're going through the canyon and you're going with the train and Toy you're Story going three. after the... Toy Story 3. Yeah. Uh, and then you have this whole Western opening scene, right? But it's an actual... Uh, Star Tours like attraction, Whoa. but it's all Toy Story base, and you're going after the evil Doctor Porkchop. That is in where where are you thinking of putting this? It's funny you mentioned that because I'd be oh, busting no. down that cool little shooting gallery. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> yeah, I see. Nice. That's, uh... And maybe a little bit of Rancho del Zocalo. I don't know. <gasps> no, don't touch my favorite restaurant. No. I mean, I might need the space for the queue. I don't think you do though. I, I mean, I might. <laughs> you look, we can always build the queue up. How about that? Okay. Or down. Or down. Put it in a mine shaft. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my idea. That was the original one that I wanted to throw out there. Uh, again, my biggest concern is that we already have a lot of that property for Toy Story um, in DCA. 
you know, and, yeah. and we were already kind of oversaturated with it. But uh, it does fit the Western theme. And I figured that yeah. it would be a cool little uh, it's an additional attraction that we could have in that land to to deter from people getting on Haunted Mansion and Pirates so that I can ride those a lot faster. Yeah. And maybe even Big Thunder Mountain. So I'm just saying. I mean, to be it's fair, fine. Toy Story has four movies and only three attractions at the park. So a fourth attraction, right. I guess, is warranted. True. <laughs> I think I want to say that I think Toy Story holds the record for most attractions at Disney parks. Does it? Oh, I think wow. so. I think when you um, think back at all of the attractions in all of the Disney parks, yeah. I think Toy Story is the IP that has the most attractions per ratio in Disney parks. Because when you count uh, Midway Mania, you count all the Buzz Lightyear versions, yeah. like. I think they win. They got the new flying yeah. saucers at Toy Story yeah. Land and Slinky the Slinky Dog. Coaster. Yeah. They have a land. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's probably true. Interesting. So anyway, <laughs> I just thought it would be a cool way to to get people away from the other attractions so that I could ride faster. Nice. Little bit of self serving, but you know, I like those types of attractions because there's a lot that you can do with those ride simulators, and there's a lot of ways that you can move them to make it feel like it's just super exciting. You mm-hmm. know, makes it look like you're falling off the cliff, and then all of a sudden this huge Rex just kind of scoops you up and puts you back on the top of the canyon, and you're back on the mi- on the train track there's so many possibilities <laughs> <laughs> i like this it's it's uh it's a a line of thinking that i never considered for uh frontier land because i think of it in more of an analog sense i guess i don't think of having like a simulator ride because i think of you know like classic runaway mine train or like i know my photo studio had like modern effects but it's still just a photo studio you know like Right. So yeah, that's that's very interesting. That's that's a cool concept for that kind of area. Right. I like it. <laughs> All right, Mel. Let's keep this going. All right. So I'm gonna need that space that you're taking over. Oh my gosh. Um, We're all taking it over. <laughs> <laughs> um I wanna focus actually this one I wanted to focus on Rancho and not really change it, but I wanted to give it like spruce it up. I love how we have the little mini celebrations from the Three Kings Day. Why can I think of anything else right now? But uh, Dia de los my Muertos. Point Dia de los Muertos. Yes, thank you. Gosh, please don't shun me, <laughs> listeners. I love you. <laughs> um, so, what I would love to do is have that little space be more incorporated with the restaurant. And we may have to change the seating up because there's another thing that I really do like, and it's dancing. Oh. But I want to incorporate both of that. So we're going to have to take away that little divider. Mm-hmm. And I know there's, there's a stage. If we could s- turn it around facing everyone who's in the restaurant oh, yeah. and have a band. And I love the mariachi divas that we have in DCA. But. Yes. Yes. Some of us kind of like to dance, you know, cumbias or any other thing. You name it. I think that little area, if we were to add just a little bit of that element of entertainment, I think it'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. We could even bring in a little cocoa flare. Yeah. Yes. Totally. No, I'm a huge fan of this because I love what they do in New Orleans Square with the jazz. I love what they do in Paradise Gardens with the various musical offerings there. And that's a perfect mm-hmm. spot. You just, you're, that's genius. You turn that stage so it faces Rancho and you've got a perfect venue. That I love this that's idea. That's it. Yes. So I'm sorry if we don't get your attraction, but I kind of want to dance too. I kind of like this idea. <laughs> like I, I kind of feel like the attraction, like, look, like I said, it was going to be my first one for a reason. You know, I, I really do feel that there's a lot of Toy Story in the parks. Like when we were thinking about what to put out there, I'm like, okay, what are the properties that have old Western? Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> and so I just started going through my head like, okay, we got Tres Caballeros. We got yeah. you know, Saludos Amigos. And I, and I thought about all of that as well. But 
uh, I love this idea so much more because I feel like if if you kind of gave it a permanent like it already kind of has this Mexican theme to that area, right? Oh, right. Yeah. But yeah. if you put it into a scenario where Miguel is telling you the story of his family, and that's kind of where the show goes, like, you know, yeah. all the dancing and the singing is all incorporated to Coco, and he tells you the story, and, you know, I, oh, man, I, oh, I love this idea. They should bring that little marionette puppet. Yes. Oh, my God. Oh. That should be the one that tells the story. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I freaking. I'm so love it, on man. board with this. Yeah, and, so and like Mel said, this. it can be seasonal. Like it can change, like every quarter to be whatever kind of like the main oh, theme yeah. of that quarter is, right? So I, yeah. I think it can go from like Western stuff to more Spanish influence and things like that. So I, I think Give you could have mix. some variety. Yeah, I like it. I yeah. think this is great. That's yeah, a great idea. Very good. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. okay. Gavin, back yes, to you. Yes, yes. All right. So this one is kind of, we're going to kind of take it down a notch, and I'm going to present a, a kind of a small idea right now, but it plays into my big finale, which Melissa oh already spoiled. <laughs> so here we go. <laughs> so uh, I have talked before about the waters of the rivers of America and how I feel like they're not as bustling as they used to be, and I wish that they were still as bustling. So as a side note, I would definitely bring back the Mike Fink keelboats. I thought those were super cool. Uh, but that's not my idea. My idea has to do with the canoes, the Explorer canoes. I would love to retheme that. And what I would like to retheme it as is a Pocahontas experience. No! <laughs> yes. <laughs> I had the same, same thing. thing. Okay, yeah. So yes. Melissa and I are definitely <laughs> on the same page tonight. Uh, and I would have them, you know, the canoes themselves would be rethemed to be look much more like uh, the type of canoe that the Native American tribes um, in the northeastern part of America would have had um, in Pocahontas. So, um, you know, looking like the film. And I think our canoe guides would be some of the secondary characters of the film. So the two that I kind of thought of as the, the best um, possibilities here are um, Pocahontas' best friend, Nakoma, and then Ooh. her um, fiancé in the film, uh, Kokoam. I think they would be great oh, be guides awesome. okay. on this, you know, and they could both tell you in, you know, kind of deadpan humorous ways about how Pocahontas taught them about, you know, the ideas of maybe there's value to, you know, exploring what's around the river bend, you know, and the idea of, you know, it's all well and good to play it safe, but sometimes in life, it's also good to explore and take a risk and go around that river bend and discover what's over there. So that's kind of the, what it's going to become. And it's going to be more of a story. And what I would love to do is to have them guide you around the river and point out things along the way. And I would really, really, really love it if they would, I know they updated all of the, creatures and animals that are on the riverbanks like i don't know like two or three years ago is all but they're still mostly just static statues you know they're not animatronic like they don't feel like they're animated in any way like all of the animals in jungle cruise like i really think they could bring animation to these animals and so you can see them in their natural habitat you know um, animals that are native to America and they could be pointing them out. And I think that could be a really fun canoe ride and they can give you some storytelling and they can even point things out on the island, which as we know, because of spoilers, is going to be a Pocahontas themed island. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, I haven't been on the canoes in years and I think that would get me on the canoes again. Uh, if there was some real Disney, storytelling and experience on them can i chime in yes <laughs> okay so what i i love 
the the canoes. That's the one thing I wanted to do was kind of give them an update. And on the end, I wanted to put Flick <laughs> as he's as if he's stuck. And oh then on yes. The other ones, <laughs> <laughs> on the other ones, I kind of was hoping that we could rotate the characters so that one would have Flick, one would have Miko on the end, mm-hmm. the other one would have um gosh. Um, the stupid little dog. Yes. <laughs> Why can't I think of I just watched that film today and I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, what is Thanks. it? Thanks. Yeah. The little little tiny like bulldog or whatever it is. I don't even know what kind of dog it is. Percy. Percy, that's Percy. it, yes. <laughs> and have like each canoe have a different character, but just those little things and I didn't think about the storytelling. I love it. Yeah. I totally love it. I would love it if that whole, like, the canoes and the island all became, like, stories from the Native American perspective, you know? Yeah. Like, telling it in an entertaining and magical way, but in a, like, respectful, like, honoring way as well. Like, you know, the yeah. legacy of the peoples that populated this continent before, you know, Europe got involved. I think it'd be really, yeah. really cool. And it yeah. kind of touches back to what Disneyland had in the beginning as well. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Full circle. I like the idea of incorporating all the other little characters towards the end, too. <laughs> I didn't think of that. That's, <laughs> that's genius. Yeah. I love that. Because of that one scene in the beginning of the film with the canoe yeah. and yeah. Flit darts his beak into it. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> I like it. It's great. I think between the two of you, you've done uh, a, a lot of concepting. And outside of creating the state show that I was talking about earlier, uh, I like bringing back kind of the canoe and, and giving that story to it. Uh, the keel boats, by the way, you know, when they stopped sailing them around the rivers of America, it was because, I don't know if you guys know this, but it's because one capsized and a bunch of people fell into the rivers of oh, America. No. Yeah. And after that accident, they just decided we're just not going to do this anymore. But I think there's a way to create like flotation devices on the sides of the boats that are underwater that prevent it from doing that. So I think there's a way of bringing back that style boat because it's such a great and unique design that it would be super cool to see that going around the rivers of America. And if you can incorporate it to this storytelling, I just think it would be a fantastic addition. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you could even have a track system like the ships do and like the jungle cruise cruise boats do. Um, that you know is there for safety because yeah Very you true. don't need to feel like the waves or anything you just you just want to go around the river in a cool boat right yeah it's yeah. just the, very, the entertainment part yeah oh man you know for the hardest land i feel like we've had some really great ideas you know we always come through we're kind of geniuses <laughs> i mean we tr- we try we try <laughs> too at least right yeah Okay, uh, this is the only other idea that I want to throw out there. Uh, so this is this is my last one. And it's going to sound in a way a little similar to something that you've talked about before, Gavin. But I feel like there's a way to implement the story because of all of the trees. What I want to do is an attraction based on Gravity Falls. Yes. Cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a long, long time ago... Uh, There was this huge concept that Mark Davis had created called Thunder Mesa Western River Expedition. And the entire concept of Thunder Mesa River Expedition was that it was going to be almost three attractions in one with with canoes and like river rapids and all sorts of stuff. It was going to just be this huge mountain with all these attractions attached to it including something that looked very similar to Pirates of the Caribbean, but in the Wild West. It was just going to have all these like show scenes in the Wild West. Sadly, Thunder Mesa Western River Expedition was never built because there was a lot of money being ported over to build Epcot and all sorts of other stuff. And unfortunately, we didn't see all of that, but we do see remnants of it throughout several parks, including the idea that one youngster by the name of Tony Baxter had when he created Big Thunder Mountain. 
Now, the idea of this giant Western River expedition has always fascinated me because having this giant attraction that works as several is, is just, I, I love that, that idea, right? So I want to bring back an old favorite, and that is the Rainbow Caverns Mine Train. What? However, the way that I want to bring it back is I want to give it a story that you're technically entering Gravity Falls. And so Dipper introduces you to the idea that there's these uncharted areas in the mines under Gravity Falls. And so Grunkle Stan sets up this cool mining expedition, and he gets ideas from this guy in Southern California, WD, wink, wink. <laughs> and because of new technology, he fakes the rainbow caverns and all the glowing stalagmites and stalactites. And so in the original mine train, it's all glowing naturally, right? You're going through and it's like this wondrous thing. And so as you're going through this train ride through the mines, you do get a chance to see this beautiful cavern with all these glowing lights. But at one point, it malfunctions. In the background, you kind of hear Sue saying, oh, sorry, dudes, I unplugged it. I tripped over the cord. And he plugs it back in. He's like, Seuss, what are you doing? Now people know it's fake. And so at that point, you kind of hear boos and hissing in the background. But you also hear a pterodactyl. <laughs> and as you're kind of going through the, the train ride, you notice that there's this shadow that comes over you. And you see all these amber pieces with dinosaurs inside of them. And you're like, uh, you kind of hear Grunkle stand in the background saying, uh, this isn't the right way. You were supposed to send them that way. It's like, okay, well, how do we do it? No, don't let them go down that way. They're going to go out of control. And all of a sudden, you're in these caverns with all these dinosaurs coming out of the melting amber. And the next thing you see is one of them swoop down and pick up waddles like they do in that episode. <laughs> uh, like I think it's Land Before Swine is the name of the episode. Mm -hmm. And so he swoops down, picks up waddles, and now you're on the chase for waddles. And so the mine train is going through all these different locations. It's going up and down and intertwines with Big Thunder Mountain and eventually becomes just this giant water ride on technically a roller coaster track. And you end up eventually saving waddles. You get to see the wonders of what was once the rainbow caverns in the mine train and nature's wonderland. But we get this cool refresh featuring characters from Gravity Falls. Dang. Okay. 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 First of all, this is a really cool idea. But second of all, and more importantly... Uh, where are you putting this? Is this going to Angel Stadium <laughs> or Frontierland? No. Because if no. it's in Frontierland, it's taking over everything. We're building around everything. We're incorporating into. We have all those back areas where all the train tracks are. We can dig under the rivers of America so that when you're in the mines, you're technically underground. Wow. You know? Okay. And then you kind of, it's, it's a huge coaster. And it just interweaves everything in Frontierland. And it just becomes this giant complex. The way that Western River Expedition kind of was originally supposed to be. That Except that insane. in the shadows of the mountains and the trees, you're technically in Gravity Falls and the mystery shack is in there. So I like this idea. I feel like, man, that is complex. It is epic. And Frontierland would be shut down for the entirety of its construction because it <laughs> interweaves the whole place. And like the engineering level of prowess that has to be there to like have this roller coaster go under the rivers of America. Uh, I can't wait to see it happen. I got it covered. Don't worry. That's, what <laughs> okay. you're here for. That's like the best thing about these episodes, these talks is this like the wild imagination and who cares about how it's going to happen it's just imagining how it's happening and it's just awesome and plus you guys always give me guff for breaking stuff down 
I'm not breaking anything down. I'm leaving everything there, just building around, <laughs> below, and true. above. That it. is That's true. true. <laughs> uh, I, the funny thing is, they'll have to redo the intro spiel for Big Thunder and say the second wildest ride in the wilderness. <laughs> Oh my God, we should just have old man McGucket say, this one's the real fastest ride in the wilderness. Forget about that other mountain. There you go. Oh man. That mountain lied to you. That's insane. I love it. Again, Ah. I mean, I like bringing in Gravity Falls. I think think that's really fun. And if you can bring in like history and mystery all at the same time, uh, uh, that's really fun. I just like the the idea of Seuss tripping over a cord, mm-hmm. and he's like, "Oh no, they're gonna know it's fake." Sorry, dudes. And yeah. then he's like, plugs it back in, and it's all glowing again. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's very cool. Yeah. So that's it. That's all my ideas. I mean, I think your ideas were good. I liked them. Your Muppets idea was yeah. genius. Uh, that's my favorite. Thanks. Yep. All right, Mel, you ready for your last idea? Gosh, it is horrible compared to what Tazen just said. No, there are no horrible ideas. (laughs) This is blue sky territory. It's... I should have went backwards because this one (laughs) is just plussing the park. It's not actually an attraction or anything. I see this... I kind of see this as a little issue because right right when you're walking, let's say, out of Galaxy's Edge into towards big thunder you know how there's like that bridge and it's so narrow and i understand because of big thunder but what if we were to open it up to i guess from galaxy's edge to the right Mm -hmm. and open up that space i've always loved the the mine cave you would say that's boarded up but it's like what if we were to open that up and kind of allow people to walk through and kind of have that different view of um the rivers Mm -hmm. and it's just something just to open it up a little bit maybe a little seating area i mean like i said it's not that big but just something to plus it up you know a little bit of stardust kind of boop (laughs) yeah yeah that could be interesting you know it's weird because if you look at the map like if you pu- if you pull up Google Maps right now and and look at Disneyland from that bird's eye view, you you look at the uh-huh. satellite image where that little mine train tunnel is with the tracks coming out of it, um, which is like a remnant of the old mine train through nature's wonderlands or whatever. Uh, right. Like it sits on on this hill, this like dome shaped hill, which is kind of a peninsula out into the rivers. So it's like this completely unused bit of land. And like, there's quite a bit of area there. So it's like, you could do something with it if you're not just using it as a berm, which is kind of like an interior berm right now is what it is. And um, like one of my concepts, which I totally like chopped was to kind of, have some sort of a viewing area on the river side of that, that you could like view something happening on the river or at the Island or something. Um, But I never really Mm -hmm. came up with a good idea there. I mean, it could be additional phantasmic viewing and they could expand phantasmic. Nope. No, because this is behind. (laughs) Oh, it would be behind. Yeah. It would be behind. Yeah. Oh, I'm just saying nope, because I don't want more phantasmic. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> uh you could have stinky pete meet and greet by the mine shaft Ooh, <laughs> could, yeah. do that. could do that all i thought about was just like not having that area clogged up yeah and it's you know it's because it's really good shade but that water i mean do we really mm, we could kind of push That's it cool. back a little there's bit there's a fish that jumps so. in there yeah you could open that up i agree it could be used for something so that was my little idea cool that was it cool nice all right well i will go with my final idea which we already kind of know what it is um tom sawyer island was great in its day um pirate's lair added a new flair but it's time for a moving forward idea with that island. And we're going to call it Pocahontas Island henceforth. 
yeah. possibly this will be announced as Disney's secret project. We don't know. Uh, <laughs> my Maybe? idea is to completely remake this island. And I know I'm going to get some guff for this, but bye bye, Phantasmic. No, no more Phantasmic. I, oh, wow. I personally don't like the fact that there is a show that has nothing to do with the themes of the area that it sits in. It, it completely catapults you out of New Orleans or out of frontier land when it's going. I don't like that. Um, I also don't like that it shuts down that whole area at night because I think it would be super magical to ride one of the boats around the rivers at night and i think it'd be really cool to be on that island at night so yes. <laughs> my idea does eliminate phantasmic which i mean you could just as easily do that in the bay over at dca like i don't see why they don't just do that anyway uh because the world is a carousel of color yeah, you could just have color rotating shows back to back. Like, I don't know. <laughs> uh, my idea for Pocahontas Island is really to remake the island entirely, to remove all um, structures that would have been, um, you know, of European influence, you know, so eliminate anything that wouldn't be a Native American structure on that island. I would actually do a lot more prop work and kind of fantasy designing of the island so that it's like you're stepping into an illustration. It's like you're stepping into a background painting from Pocahontas. So all of the trees there would be very stylized and colorful and all of the foliage and plant life and rock work and everything. It, it's like you're stepping into the film, right? That's what I envision. And I, I want the ambience to be there so you'll hear refrains from the soundtrack playing while you're on the island um i love your idea about the caves i had the same idea you could have like native american style cave paintings in there that kind of tell the story of pocahontas and her people um and you know with cool colored lights because Kind of everything's revolving around the colors of the wind in this island. Um, I imagine a Grandmother Willow story time area where you have a huge Grandmother Willow and like a little amphitheater over there where all of the kids and parents and and millennials without kids can gather and enjoy <laughs> the magic of a Disney story <laughs> because we all do. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I I think that could be really really cool. They could have some some real Disney magic with the the willow branches, you know, parting, and you see Grandmother Willow's face and and all all of the magic that they could do there. Um, I would love to have a meet and greet with Pocahontas herself, who to me is one of the most amazing, magnificent, powerful female characters in the Disney catalog. I I love her. Um, and I, I think she's underrepresented in the parks. Uh, so I, I just feel like I want it to be like like Cars Land or uh, Pandora, you know, where you really feel like you're stepping into the world of that film. You know, I want it to look like that. I want it to be um, all about the storytelling and um, the, the feeling that you get from hearing those refrains of those famous songs and you know seeing pocahontas and her village and getting to glimpse grandmother willow and hear a story from her i just feel like it could be amazing and then at night you really get to see even more um, of the colors of the wind and I, I would love it if when you go to that north side of the island you could have a viewing point for all of those magnificent waterfalls which they've made on the far side of the river now and they could come alive with with colors you know at night Ooh. you know kind of like you know the aurora borealis but in water you know i think that'd be really neat to see um, also, along with my idea of the canoes, um, where you would have fully animatronic versions of animals around the riverbanks, 
on the island, you would have animatronic versions that you could glimpse up in a tree or in a rock crevice of animals that you actually see in the film. So you might be able to glimpse Miko somewhere or Flit flying around in a tree branch or, you know, like a, a magnificent golden eagle up in a tree or a family of deer. And they would all kind of be in the style and keeping of the film um, and just add to the, that atmosphere. I just feel like it's a, a wonderful stage you could have out there because the distance that you would have when you're not on the island, when you're on the shore, you could look out there and it wouldn't ruin it. It wouldn't look you know, like super cartoony and like kind of ruin the thing. But when you're on that island and you're up close, you get to see all the detail and all the stylized uh, vignettes that they could do out there. And I think it could be really cool like you're escaping into that film. You know how I thought how I think about this. This is a yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, considering you hate Fantasmic so much, <laughs> why don't you just create like a Pocahontas show where the narrator, you know, wh- where basically that entire thing becomes a new stage, and you just have a version of Fantasmic that's all Pocahontas. I thought of that, but shows like that don't last. Like singular property shows, just they don't last at the park. So mm-hmm. I, I feel like that was a short sighted kind of idea. I, I did consider that. Um, but it's not that I hate Fantasmic. I don't hate it. Uh, I'm ambivalent towards it. And I do feel like it causes some logistical problems in that area when it's going. Um, it also, to me, causes some, some thematic problems when it's going. Uh, because that area was never originally intended to put on a show where thousands of people are watching, right? They've made some adjustments to that area to help accommodate, you know, Tony Baxter's ingenious cue modification for pirates is one of them. And then the sort of, um, terrace stepping that they've done along that area of the banks of the rivers of America has helped, but it's still an enormous bottleneck and an infrastructure problem. And, I, you know, I just feel like I'd rather it not be there. I, I think they yeah. could put it somewhere else and it would be just fine. You know, like, There's a huge amount of space in the Small World Mall in the Fantasia Gardens area where they could do something like that. You know, they've they've got an area where they could redo the infrastructure of that and have it not create a bottleneck where you've got the park's most popular attractions, you know, right there. You know, uh, I, I, I feel like there are solutions. And so... I'm not worried about Fantasmic. I think it could be put somewhere else and be just fine because it it doesn't rely on its location for its effectiveness, right? I I feel like, I mean, that could be put anywhere, really. Yeah. So I feel like Pocahontas Island would be enough of a, a replacement for it that, you know, they could find other solutions. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a wonderful set of ideas that we ended up coming up with this time around. I mean, yeah. we're always worried, but we always come through, and Disney always copies us, so... <laughs> so wait for that Gravity Falls attraction so, coming 2025. Yep. See you later, Pirate's Lair. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, everything in Frontierland for five years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If there's any ideas from this episode that you particularly enjoyed, let us know in the comment section and join the conversation about anything that you'd like to change in Frontierland as well. You can leave a comment on the blog post for this episode, podcasters.com slash 269 if you want to leave a comment on the blog post. You can also leave us a comment on Instagram, Facebook, or on Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. We'd love to hear your thoughts and share them in an upcoming episode. So that's it. I think it's going to wrap up this little gift of ours to all of you with a nice little bow. So until next time, keep dreaming. 
keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a great week, everyone. Bye. Major look.